Let's take a look at the bomber that may have been ahead of its time, the B-58 Hustler. The Convair B-58 Hustler was the world's first operational Mach 2 bomber, designed to fly high and fast to quickly penetrate the Soviet Union's defenses and deliver its nuclear payload. The B-58 served for nearly a decade from March of 1960 until January of 1970. Everything about the B-58 was designed for speed, its narrow fuselage with the three crew members sitting in tandem, a delta wing, and surprisingly the lack of a bomb bay. Ordnance was carried in an external streamlined pod which housed the bombs and additional fuel. Unfortunately, almost as soon as it was introduced, the Soviets had developed high altitude surface to air missiles to counter the Hustler. This caused the B-58 to adapt and employ low level air defense penetration techniques, which both limited its range and strategic value. Despite this, the B-58 remains an iconic and memorable aircraft, having set some 19 world records, some of which still stand today. Here are some quick specifications for the Convair B-58 Hustler. Length 96 feet 10 inches Height 29 feet 11 inches Wingspan 56 feet 9 inches Maximum speed Mach 2 Empty weight 55,560 pounds. Maximum takeoff weight, 176,890 pounds. Range, 4,100 nautical miles. Engines, each General Electric J79 GE 5A afterburning turbojet produces 10,400 pounds of thrust dry or 15,000 pounds of thrust with afterburner. Like many bombers of the era, the B-58 made use of a tailgun to defend against fighters. In this case, the B-58 was armed with a single General Electric T-171E3 Vulcan 20mm rotary cannon. The cannon was remotely controlled and only required the defensive systems officer to lock a target and then fire the gun. The fire control system would then compute aiming, range, and velocity and engage the target. The B-58's main armament was of course nuclear bombs. The Hustler could carry a single Mark 39 or B-53 nuclear bomb in the weapons pod. To navigate to the target, the B-58 used a sophisticated internal navigation system along with the KS-39 Star Tracker, which was an astro internal navigation system. To calculate the bomb release point, a Doppler radar, search radar, and radar altimeter were used. Later versions of the B-58 employed sub-pylons on either side of the centerline pod, allowing the Hustler to take four additional B-43s or B-61s bringing the total payload to five nuclear bombs. The maximum weapons load was 19,450 pounds. And while the B-58 never carried conventional bombs, it did equip a photo reconnaissance pod and the high Virgo air launch ballistic missile. The B-58 carried out four test launches of the high Virgo to determine anti-satellite and ballistic missile systems capabilities. The need for a supersonic bomber arose as the Cold War was just beginning. In 1949, the Air Research and Development Command at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base issued the Generalized Bomber Study or GEBO-2. Incredibly, this requirement for a supersonic bomber came just two years after the sound barrier was broken by Chuck Yeager in the X-1. In spite of the challenges, several companies submitted proposals including Convair, Boeing, Cutlass, Douglas, North American, and Martin. Most of the initial proposals made use of a delta wing design. This was for several reasons. Namely, a delta wing offered more internal volume for fuel and support systems, while also providing low wing loading and permitting supersonic flight in the 50 to 70,000 foot altitude range. The competition was trimmed down to two finalists, Boeing's MX-1712 and Convair's MX-1626. And while Boeing's submission was viewed as just as good as Convair's, the Air Force ultimately went with the Convair design, as Boeing had just begun production on the B-52. Some felt that it was better to diversify the production of strategic bombers to several manufacturers rather than to just one company. Still, Convair had experience with delta-winged aircraft such as the XF-92A, which would lead to the F-102 and F-106 fighters. In February of 1953, the contract for the Convair design was issued, with the bomber being designated as a B-58. The initial contract was modified to include a couple of XB-58 prototypes along with 11 YB-58A pre-production models and some 31 mission pods, which included a rocket-propelled controllable bomb pod, a free-fall bomb pod, and an electronic reconnaissance pod. 
On 11 November 1956, the B-58 took its first flight after being assembled under a veil of secrecy. In fact, the project was so secret that no unauthorized personnel had knowledge of its basic configuration or shape. On 30 December 1956, the B-58 exceeded Mach 1 for the first time. The B-58 pushed the technology of its time to the limit. The flight test and evaluation programs ultimately involved some 30 aircraft and would run through April of 1959. The B-58's Mach 2 speeds were made possible by its delta wing which had a leading edge sweep of 60 degrees. At these high speeds, significant amounts of heat is generated. To counteract this, the Hustler's crew compartment, wheel wells, and electronics were all pressurized and air conditioned. Additionally, the B-58 made use of one of the first extensive applications of aluminum honeycomb panels, a process which bonds the outer and inner aluminum skins to a honeycomb of fiberglass. The engine nacelles were unlike any found on aircraft of the time, and the engine inlets used moving conical spikes which were fully aft on the ground and would be driven forward at high speeds. These movements were automatically controlled. The three-man crew consisted of a pilot, a bombardier navigator, and a defensive systems operator seating in tandem in separate cockpits. Later versions of the Hustler added an ejection capsule for each crew member, which allowed for ejections as high as 70,000 feet and at speeds of up to Mach 2. The capsule would enclose a crew member in a protective clamshell and could be used as a life raft. The electronic systems and controls were also advanced for its time, and even featured a first-of-its-kind automatic message and warning system using tape. During the era of all-male flight crews, Research showed that a woman's voice would gain the attention of young men in distracting or stressful situations. The B-58 crews dubbed the voice Sexy Sally, a far cry from the current voice warning systems of today, which have been referred to as Bitching Betty or Nagging Nora. Just nine months after the first B-58 was delivered to the Air Force, the Hustler was declared operational in August of 1960. A month later, a lone B-58 participated in the annual Strategic Air Command or SAC competition and proved to be superior to the B-47 and B-52, winning first place in both the high and low altitude bombing exercises. Despite its incredible performance, the B-58 proved to be a difficult aircraft to fly. In fact, new Hussar pilots trained on the Convair F-102 Delta Dagger before graduating to the TB-58A trainer. Two SAC bomb wings would operate the B-58 during its operational service, the 43rd and the 305th bombardment wings. The 305th also operated the B-58's combat crew training school. After overcoming some early problems and internal resistance from some general officers, the B-58 standing had solidified within SAC. However, with the Soviets' introduction of the SA-2 guideline surface-to-air missile, the B-58's tactics were changed to fly at low altitude. Due to the denser air at low altitudes, the B-58 could not fly supersonic and its range was reduced, negating its designed advantages. As a result, Secretary of Defense Robert McNamara decided that the B-58 was not a viable weapon system. In 1965, McNamara ordered the retirement of the B-58 citing the principal reason being the high sustainment cost of the Hustler fleet. The last B-58s were retired in January of 1970, just under 10 years after entering service. The remaining fleet survived intact until 1977, when most were sold to Southwestern Alloys for scrap. Today, there are eight remaining B-58s on display at several museums. The B-58 was replaced by the FB-111A, which was designed for low-level attack and was less expensive to maintain. During its brief operational life, several variants of the B-58 were built and proposed. The examples that were built include two of the prototype XB-58s, 11 of the YB-58A pre-production aircraft, the production B-58As of which 86 were built, the trainer version TB-58A of which 8 were converted to from the B-58A, the NB-58A, which was a converted YB-58A, used to test the GE J93 engine, which was intended for the XB-70 Valkyrie, and the RB-58A reconnaissance version, of which 17 were built. The remaining variants were unbuilt concept aircraft, including the B-58B, which was to be larger and faster than the B-58A. The B version would have included upgraded J79 GE9 engines, canards, extra fuel, and the ability to carry conventional weapons. The B-58B was also intended to carry a parasite aircraft known as the Fish, 
or first invisible super hustler, which was a Mach 4 aircraft launched from the B-58B. The B-58C was a proposed, less expensive alternative to the XB-70 Valkyrie and would have used the same engines as the SR-71, the J-58. Two and four engine versions of the B-58C were designed. Estimates had the C version attaining Mach 3 speeds and supercruising at Mach 2. The B-58D was a proposed interceptor version of the Hustler, and the B-58E was to be a multi-mission variant and armed with multiple air launch ballistic missiles or ALBMs. And finally, the Convair Model 58-9 was a proposed supersonic transport. Designed to carry 58 passengers at Mach 2 plus speeds, the aircraft represented Convair's entry into the National Supersonic Transport Program. Legacy The B-58 was a revolutionary aircraft and may be ahead of its time. During the course of its service, the Hustler set 19 world records, which included the longest supersonic flight in history from Tokyo to London in just over 8 hours and 35 minutes. The aircraft used for this flight was part of an operational unit and received no modifications aside from being washed and waxed. The operation and aircraft were dubbed Grease Lightning and averaged 938 miles per hour despite 15 air-to-air -air refuelings and one of the afterburners malfunctioning for the last hour of the flight. The Hustler also won the Bendix, Blario, Harman, McKay, and Thompson Aerospace Trophies. Still, the B-58 also had a disproportionately high accident rate. Some 26 B-58s were lost in accidents, representing just over 22% of total production. This, along with a high cost to maintain, did not help the Hustler's chances for long-term service. What do you think? Was the B-58 ahead of its time? Was it a misunderstood platform? Could the B-58 have served longer with advancements in electronics and composites? Let me know in the comments below. I'd like to take a moment to thank my Patreons who directly help support this channel. If you'd like to become a patron, I'll leave a link in the description below. Thanks for watching, stay safe, and see you next time.